welcome on this cold Friday to Columbus, Ohio and our uh, evidence-based course that is going to teach you how to plan and implement a Parkinson-specific exercise program if you'd like to. You're going to learn a lot about Parkinson's disease and the research that supports why exercise changes the course of this disease. Uh, this is not like any other CE course you've ever been to. So you will be sitting today, but tomorrow you're going to be up and moving around. And the feedback we've had from this CE course is, oh wow, it was fun. And I learned a lot. So I hope you're able to say that by the end of tomorrow. This is what I really want you to say by the end of tomorrow. I want you to say, I'm going to inspire these people. Because I think I'm talking to a group of healthcare professionals that are PTs, OTs, uh, nurses, athletic trainers. And I'm sure within your practice you inspire your folks. Otherwise you wouldn't be in that field. But in the, in the world of Parkinson's disease, if daily exercise can change the course of their disease, you've got to be able to inspire them to do this. You have to be able to convince them that they can't give up on daily exercise because it will change them, it will give them function back, it will empower them. So at the end of the day tomorrow, not only are you going to learn about what are the exercises that help the symptoms of this disease, but you're going to learn an attitude to help inspire somebody that thinks they might have a hopeless diagnosis. So delay the disease, what the heck is it? We are a wellness program. I want you to think outside the box when it comes to treating people with Parkinson's disease. That's what we call them, PWPs, people with Parkinson's disease. I think in the older adult client, and they're not all older, but a lot of them are, I don't think one of their rules of thumb is, I'm going to exercise every day. I think as age creeps up on you, you become more sedentary and you think that's just the way it should be. Well, they have to think outside the box. And you've got to encourage them to do that because daily exercise now, if it can become part of their lives, will change them. It will empower them. It will maybe slow the disease process down and maybe reverse it. So don't let them follow all the rules because if they follow all the rules that they think they should, first of all, they're going to miss all the fun. But second of all, they're going to miss all the benefit. We plank in our classes. Our 80-year-olds are planking. Uh, we don't allow anyone to sit still in our classes, even the ones that say, I'm having a really bad day and it's slow for me, I barely got here, that's great. We'll do something today. But we are making it rigorous for folks and challenging them to do things that they had never done before. And you know what, they love it. And not only did they love it, but they laugh and they change and they become more independent and they get out of bed by themselves. They get out of chairs by themselves, and they're proud, and they're hooked. So if I were talking to a group of monkeys and rats, I could say beyond a shadow of a doubt, the research supports that daily exercise changes your brain chemistry and slows the course of the disease. But I'm not. But I am HIPAA compliant with my pictures of my monkeys and my rats. <laughs> and I did blindfold them for that reason, and so if you see the rat on the left, he cut that out for his five minutes of fame. Do not act like you recognize him on the street. I don't need a HIPAA violation. But in the animal kingdom, this is what happened. They injected monkeys and rats with a toxin that created Parkinsonian-like symptoms. So um, they took this group that had Parkinson's symptoms and divided them in half. And half of them, they exercised a lot. Rat wheels were running, monkeys on treadmills, which by the way, I've been to those labs, that's hilarious. And those animals just were rigorously exercised. The other half were sedentary. They were chewing gum, watching TV, smoking cigarettes, doing nothing. So then we compare them. Clinically, look at them, the ones that exercised looked better. They didn't have as much stiffness, rigidity. They didn't have as many of the symptoms. But on autopsy, their brains were different. And this is the exciting part. So the basis behind Parkinson's disease, which you're going to learn as this day goes on, is a lack of efficient use of dopamine in the brain. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It allows you to move. 
If you don't have enough of it or you're not utilizing it efficiently, you don't move well. So on autopsy, these animals showed healthier brains, the exercised group. Not only healthier brains, but more dopamine available to use. And in the, the rats and monkeys that were really pushed with their exercise, under the microscope, it looked like new synapses were growing, new connections between neurons. So the presumption was rigorous exercise may have the opportunity to reverse the disease. Isn't that exciting? Let's just do something before we start on this slide. Let's push yourself away from your chairs a little bit, or away from your tables. And um, put your pens down. Sit out on the edge of your chair. Let's have some nice, beautiful posture. Edge of the chair is where we live. You'll live at the edge of the chair tomorrow. And let's just start doing some high knees. Let's just start doing some really high knees. So bigger is better for Parkinson's disease, right? Bigger is better. So if you see somebody with little low knees, you're going to correct that. Big high knees. Big high knees. That's nice. Touch your shoulders if you can. Good luck to you. That's pretty easy. <laughs> pretty easy. All right, let's... Now keep your high knees going. Let's put your hands out here. We're going to flip some pancakes. You have two palms up. Flip them over. Flip them over. Don't let your knees drop now. I'm going to come around and check. Flip them over. Flip them over. Now do one up, one down, please. One up, one down. One palm up, one palm down. And flip. And flip. And the knees still have to be high. Yep. Okay. Now, this is a little bit of multitasking, but this is a piece of cake. So now let's make this a little bit more difficult. Now, we're going to use loud voices because Parkinson's disease, you lose your voice. Don't stop your knees. Don't stop your pancakes. <laughs> we're going to count down by threes from 29. Okay. Let's start loudly. 29, 26, 23, 20, 17, 14, 11, 8, 5, 2, minus Thank you. Thank you. That is just a little example of some of our multitasking things. Those are for people that are sitting in a chair. Wait till you see what we got for walking, bouncing a ball, and saying numbers and letters and... Anyway, I didn't want you to get bored sitting there so long. Let's talk about neuroplasticity. That's the word I teach all my people with Parkinson's disease to use when they're at a Christmas party because they sound really smart. This is why we think this works. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to adapt or change to a disease process or trauma. So I'm almost done. This is my last slide of folks that were in our class. This is our first class. And, you know, those people are my heroes because they would come in the cold weather, they would come in the hot weather, they would come when they're having a bad day, when they really didn't think they should be there, they came anyway. Um, half of them are still with us exercising, half of them aren't even alive anymore. And you'll see that in your classes. But we love all those people. I think it changed my life, to be honest with you. With delay the disease, I think um, that's just it. We're delaying the disease. When you're diagnosed with Parkinson's, as I'm sure with any other disease, I mean, you could go one of two ways, wallow in your sorrows or, or work. You, the delayed disease gives you hope and almost like a bridge to when they find a cure for Parkinson's. So as long, the longer you can delay it and, and hold back the side effects and the progression of the disease, the, the longer, the more hope there is that you, you're going to be there for the cure when it finally happens. Hi, I'm David Zid, and I want to show you a quick exercise for multitasking your brain. Let's start with pancake flips. We're going to go both palms up, both palms down, and up and down, up and down. This doesn't have to be fast, but make sure you're going all the way around, over and back. Okay, here's where we get a little trickier now. Let's go one up, one down, over and back. Remember, you got one palm up, one palm down, over and back, over and back. Okay, let's add one more thing to this. We're going to add that old high knees that we love. We're going to go high knees. Now, don't give me these little guys. Give me these big guys. Everything we do in here is bigger, right? 
Okay, here we go. We're doing high knees, pancake flips. Over and back. Over and back. Over and back. Let's get about three more. Do I see smoke coming out of your ears? Your brain's working overtime. This is a great exercise for multitasking. Let's link this to a habit that you already do. See if you can get this in right before you eat breakfast. Good luck. Okay, we're gonna do another gait drill. It's called multitask walking. So we're gonna put a little cognition into the gait. Here's the rule. We take a left foot forward, and the right hand's gonna dribble a giant basketball. Now it's gotta be a big one, so you gotta tap your leg and come up. Tap your leg, come up. We don't care how many you do. Just tap your leg, come back up. Okay, when the right foot goes forward, we're gonna do a giant big pinch, and we're looking up at the ceiling. Again, we don't care how many you do, we just want multiples, okay? So that's the rule. Left foot goes forward, big basketball. Right foot goes forward, giant pinch, okay? And just start walking, hit it. Oh. Yep, oh. You're, you're walking, yep, we're, we're getting somewhere. Now, if your house is on fire, <laughs> don't be doing this drill, right? <laughs> But is it about speed, gang? Is it about speed? No. Okay, is it about a big step? Yes. yes. Is it about balance, probably? Yeah, sure, there's probably a little balance in here. But what else, what's the most important thing about this? Multitasking. You're getting some multitasking. Legs are straight, feet are stacked. That's a side up, right? Typical side up. Let's tweak this move. Our top leg is always in the back. So we're gonna do, I call the scissors kick. The top leg is always in the back. And you're going to make a fist with that hand that's on the ground. Okay, just make a fist with it. We're going to keep it on the ground. All right? Your free hand's up in the air. Let's put it down on the floor. We're going to end up in a push-up position, gang. So just bring your hips and knees off the floor. Scissors. Okay. Yep, keep your scissors. And we're going to try to touch your nose and your chin, or your chin, to your fist. Head on down. Push-up position. Just do a push-up. Hips and knees off the floor. Hips and knees off the floor. Hips and knees off the floor. Now, if you can't get hips and knees off the floor, can you do it with the hips off the floor? Yeah. If you can't do that, can we just go down and up, even if your hips are on the floor? Mm -hmm. This is one of my all-time favorite moves for Parkinson's. Why? You can get up and Let's ball. do a couple more, real slow. What's your body doing? Is it a stretch? Is it a rotational stretch? Ah, yes, yes. It's a big rotational stretch. What do we mean when we're, when we're all in that unblock? You remember that unblock where you're, where you're walking like this, right? That's the old football coach with the tight shorts. He's all crappy <laughs> because his knees and hips hurt, right? Right? We need, we need, we need this. And, and what happens when you get that? That's a swagger thing. That's a swagger, right? That's a swagger. That's what we want. So this is a side push-up. Great little move. All right. Could you tweak it to make it easier? Mm -hmm. Sure. Could you tweak it to make it harder? Absolutely. Absolutely. Great little move. Let's flip and do the same thing on our side. 